In the illusion, moods occur in your subjective experiences that flow like the weather. Sometimes that emotional or experiential weather stays dull for long periods. Some have referred to it as the dark night of the soul, meaning a time when they are feeling very down and seemingly unable to connect with their spiritual side, their oneness with Source. That is depressing to experience, but it is a time in which great and important spiritual work is being undertaken beneath the level of your conscious human awareness, and when you come through it, as you will, it is as though a great burden had been lifted from you, and enthusiasm for life once more bubbles into your consciousness, and your inner knowing that you are an indispensable and infinitely loved aspect of God comes back into your awareness. It's all about letting go of the illusion. And the first steps involve the personal realization that it can never satisfy you, which is depressing because you have relied on it for pleasure, enjoyment, and distraction, and to finally realize and acknowledge that it can never truly satisfy your needs is very unsettling. But it is also the first step towards awakening as you come to realize that only God's love can satisfy you, even though you may often have felt yourselves to be unlovable and then assume that God judges you even more harshly than you do yourselves, thus confirming your unlovableness. In this you are in fact producing an idol from your imagination, an imaginary human type of authority figure much larger and stronger than you, whom you think of as God, and who has the same insane need to judge condemn, and punish as you do. But God does not judge, ever. He is love, and love is unconditional because there is nothing else, so no one is excluded, everyone is infinitely loved for all eternity. Those whom you choose to see as evil, unacceptable, deserving of hell, are just mirroring back to you your own self-judgment. When you cease to judge and start forgiving and accepting, you will see those others in a different light as suffering damaged ones, desperately seeking love, and terrified of rejection. There is no rejection because every child of God, and all our children of God, was created perfect and nothing has occurred or ever could occur to change that. That sense of being unlovable is an aspect of the illusion that absolutely drives many humans to seek joy or relief in a variety of addictions that, in the end, only bring them more pain. Letting go of addictions can be very difficult as issues that you would rather not look at tend to invade your consciousness, guilt for misdeeds, and judgment of self as unacceptable, not good enough, not strong enough. As clarity arises it is very tempting to flee back into the apparent safety of whatever addiction you use for escape, anything that you use to avoid being quietly alone with yourself, to keep yourself busy with the world outside yourself, is an addiction and there is nothing outside yourself. That is why it is essential that you go within daily. Doing so allows and encourages your hearts to open to the divine field of love in which you are eternally enveloped. Many have difficulty with this because the ego is ever alert to the possibility of you abandoning it in favor of God's voice, which is with you always, just waiting for you to become quiet and open. So your egos fill your minds with all kinds of distractions, needs, shoulds, anxieties, anticipations, anything that will prevent you accessing the state of quietness and stillness that will enable you to hear the quiet and loving voice for God. However, if you just persist and sit, allowing the issues that you fear to arise, and then just observe them without judgment, you will begin to feel the love enveloping you and you will be able to forgive and accept yourselves as you come to the realization that there is only love, that all else is illusory. Intellectually many of you know this and accept it, but, due to the enculturation that appears to enfold you and make demands on you as a human from the first moment that you experience human awareness as a tiny infant, you all have a deeply ingrained sense that you need to conform to the cultural norms of the society into which you were born. At some stage, an intense need for personal freedom will arise, and the child or young adult will either rebel against the intrusive nature of the imposed culture, or succumb to cultural pressure and conform. From that moment on, inner conflict will disturb and confuse the individual, and the only way forward is through it as the mind develops the ability to reason and then discard all that dishonors the integrity of its divinely created self. All have the ability to move forward and leave behind the cultural conditioning that they have undergone. 
You are all divine beings of infinite integrity who chose to incarnate as humans and experience self-doubt, unworthiness, and unacceptability for the lessons that a life in the illusion could offer you. You chose human life in this moment of the illusion to assist in humanity's awakening process, and in order to be of service you had to undergo the full illusory experience. This does make it difficult initially for you, as the memory of your true nature is hidden from you by the cloak that is the illusion. Nevertheless, you have limitless assistance from your support team in the spiritual realms who are constantly available to answer when you call. You have been very well prepared for the human task you undertook because, prior to incarnating, you were given intense training to enable you to deal with all the eventualities that you might encounter. Still, the cloak that hides your true nature from your awareness is heavy, and frequently, when you attempt to go within, it appears to shut you off or isolate you completely from your spiritual guides and mentors, the voice for God. Often people feel that they are wasting their time trying to connect with spirit, that the spiritual realms are just a figment of their imaginations, a sad and desperate attempt to find something holy to believe in because the real world is such an unhappy place filled only with suffering and poverty. But of course that real world is illusory, as you well know, and you will awaken and find it has dissolved without trace. Until that moment, it is your most urgent task to go within to keep going within, to persist in your attempts to hear the voice for God, and to distance yourselves from the distractions with which your egos attempt to entice you back into the illusion. You are on earth to be the light and the salvation of humanity by demonstrating love in action and by constantly holding the intent to share and extend the love which our divine source wishes to channel through you to humanity. All you have to do, all that you need to do is to intend to be a willing conduit through which God's love can flow. Nothing more. But when you allow your doubts about God or about your own worthiness to be a channel to occupy your thoughts, it is as though you were damming the river of love so that beyond you the ground experiences a drought. Trust in God, the source of all that exists, and know that the light and salvation of humanity shines through you to bring all home to awakening. It is a done deal. Humanity's awakening is inevitable, but your input, your individual loving intentions are an absolutely essential part of the deal. God has infinite faith in your ability to bring the light of his love to all of humanity, and your will and the holy will are one. You cannot fail because you have already chosen to do the will of God. So go within at least daily and feel the love that envelops you, and listen to the voice for God offering you wisdom and guidance in every moment.